a funny thing happened when Jimmy Hart joined WCW in the mid-1990s. Some of their wrestlers' entrance themes began to sound awfully familiar. Like I'm talking Ice Ice Baby under pressure familiar. Now I'm not trying to be a dick here because I like the mouth of the South. He once let my son touch his megaphone. Uh, that came out wrong. Nonetheless, it should be argued that these songs were in fact shamelessly stolen from the WWE. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And won't you please subscribe? Because here are 10 times WCW and Jimmy Hart ripped off WWE themes. Hulk Hogan's Real American is one of the most recognizable songs in American pop culture history. But when Hogan took his talents to WCW, while he was able to bring along the coattail riding team of Brutus, the frickin' Barber Beefcake, and Jimmy Hart, the Hulkster was obviously not allowed to take his entrance theme because of copyright. So Hart hopped into the recording studio, probably just outside of Bad Street Atlanta, GA, and cooked up something real nice for his brother from another mother. Hogan was now American made thanks to this new tune that was purposely made to mimic the all-American Rick Derringer played original. A shallow imitation to say the least. Although the music did rock, the new lyrics were laden with so much cheese to try and hide the fact that the mouth of the South was basically up to no Gouda. Following in the footsteps of the Hulkster to WCW was Randy Savage, as he had no desire to retire and transition to a full-time role in commentary per Vince McMahon wanting a younger roster for his new generation era. Instead, the Macho Man quickly became one of WCW's top stars, aligning himself with Hogan once again. Now I think we can all agree that Randy Savage had one of the greatest theme songs in wrestling history, and I'm not talking about his late career, Midlife crisis, what up, Mach music, but the iconic pomp and circumstance. Seeing as how this tune is in the public domain and free to use, the Mouth of the South still decided to remix the sheep out of this classic with a mean electric guitar version, which can only be described in two words. Ooh, yeah. When the aforementioned Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage were feuding with Ric Flair and Big Van Vader during the summer of 1995, the Hulkster began to brag more than usual about some ultimate surprise he would soon unleash upon the wrestling world. Now, unfortunately for all you suckers out there who thought the Ultimate Warrior was seriously joining WCW, what an ultimately sad surprise it must have been for you when instead a sorry looking warrior cosplay called the Renegade debuted. I mean, look at this freaking guy and listen to this freaking music. I guess Jimmy Hart forgot to load the spaceship with the rocket fuel because it's crazy how much the Warriors iconic WWE theme and this song sound alike. What's worse is that when the Warrior finally did join WCW, he too got saddled with this knockoff version of his original unstable banger. With a career lasting from 1987 to 2004, it's likely that most millennials haven't an inkling of who John Tenta was. But I'll tell you who he wasn't. He wasn't a shark, or a fish, or an avalanche. Well, technically, he was known as Avalanche in WCW. That is, until the WWE threatened to sue over similarities to John's gimmick of Earthquake. Managed by, you guessed it, Jimmy Hart, Earthquake once famously squashed Hulk Hogan like a bug. Immediately endearing himself to the Hulkster as a 500 pound man who he could make some money with. Fast forward to one of the many aftershocks of when Hogan jumped to WCW and Big John seized an opportunity to make a lot more guaranteed scratch through no fault of his own. The natural disaster that WCW was barely bothered to alter anything about John's previous gimmick, including his Quaker Shake theme song.
the self-proclaimed greatest intercontinental champion of all time, took his blue suede shoes to WCW in the mid-90s in the hopes of rekindling the success he achieved during the golden era of the WWE. But unfortunately for the honky-tonk man, WCW's upper management had suspicious minds about Honky and were convinced he was nothing but a hound dog. However, thanks to his close personal friend, Hulk Hogan, asking Easy e Eric Bischoff to not be so cruel, the Honky Tonk Man debuted and received one of Jimmy Hart's laziest theme song reworks ever, called Honky Tonk Baby. This WCW theme was basically the same rockabilly ditty he had in the WWE, and even had the exact same lyrics just swapped around a little. Cool, cocky, and really, really bad. Honky lasted four months in WCW before being returned to sender address unknown time for a nasty sensation get ready for pity city the Nasty Boys certainly lived up to their name as a pair of anti-social punk brawlers. I'm not going to call them wrestlers because they were sloppy in the ring and only lasted in the business for so long because they had good friends helping them out. Like, of course, their manager, Jimmy Hart. From a musical standpoint, Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags originally benefited from the 1986 hit song Nasty by It's Janet, Miss Jackson if you're nasty. But licensed music once again took control and the Nasties had had to find another nasty groove to strut their stuff to, which led the Mouth of the South to create their awesomely unique theme full of chicken hip-hop scratches that welcome one and all to Pity City. And their WCW theme somehow keeps the same beat, only this time layering in electric guitars and the boys behind the mic singing Nasty Sensation. It really hurts my heart to think back on Bret Hart in WCW. The hitman had dominated the WWE in the 1990s, but soon became just another well-paid wrestler that WCW had no clue what to do with, debuting a month removed from the infamous Montreal Screwjob at Starcade 97. The hitman wasn't booked to actually wrestle, but instead serve as the guest referee for a match between Larry Zbysko and Eric Bischoff. Heartbreaking story stuff here, and musically speaking, WCW and Jimmy Hart also came up with a bizarro world Peter Frampton sounding piece of entrance music called Hitman in the House, which would have better suited a Hitman ripoff like Bret Hart with two T's. Obviously, WCW couldn't legally use Bret's Heart Attack WWE theme, but in true fashion, they picked a song that was not the best theme there is, not the best theme there was, and definitely not the best theme there ever will be. It's me, it's me, it's that B U double Z, and that was Brad Armstrong's feeble attempt at imitating his younger brother when he played a second rate stoner called Buzzkill. What a shame, too, because out of all four of the Armstrong brothers, Brad was considered to be the best in ring performer, even during his days as the goddamn Candyman, the brainchild of one Vince Russo, who basically had half the brain of Sid Vicious. Armstrong was literally told on TV that he better call somebody like his little brother for a gimmick, which was WCW trying to be hip and cool, but just coming off as, pardon the pun, a buzzkill dude. And while the road D-O-double-G was busy getting down with DX, wouldn't you know it that poor Brad was walking out to a copycat theme built around this New Age Outlaw's infamous opening guitar riff. He's the heartbeat. In 1999, Dusty Rhodes took his rightful place back home in WCW, reuniting with his son Dustin in a war against Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair, after the heel duo had done several skits mocking the American Dweem. Now the Rhodes family more than held their own in a grudge match victory over Double J and the Nature Boy at the final WCW pay-per-view ever called Greed, with the special stipulation being that the losing team would receive, wait for it, a stink face. Now that's bad, but not nearly as bad as the Mouth of the South's creation of this new theme for Dusty called quite simply American Dream, which is such a blatant ripoff of Dusty's WWE common man boogie that Hart should have been sued and stink faced simultaneously.
the son of former WWE Champion Stan the Man Stasiak. Sean Stasiak never quite took off the way other second generation superstars like Bret Hart or Randy Savage did. Probably because his career consisted of less than perfect gimmicks in the WWE, like the dim-witted hunk for the pretty mean sisters known as Meat, or as a clumsy goofball who claimed to hail from Planet Stasiak. But WCW being WCW, Perfect Sean, or is it Perfect Sean? I don't know. Either way, this Kurt Hennig knockoff has got to be one of the worst puns ever. Still, this gimmick was abandoned before too long, which meant so was this Jimmy Hart ripoff version of Jim Johnston's classical theme for the real Mr. Perfect. 